We have a quorum. Thank you very much. We are above capacity. I'd like to ask people to please avoid standing in doorways or in hallways. I know it's difficult. Uh, there's quite a turnout here tonight, uh, but it is important to do that. I thank you for responding to and acting upon what the vast majority of people in South Portland want to see, and that is no tar sands. Tar sands is all risk and no reward for the people and environment of <coughs> South Portland and Maine. Tar sands puts at risk our health, our air, our water, Casco Bay, our fishing and lobstering industries, Sebago Lake, which is the drinking water supply for greater Portland. Tar sands puts at risk our property values, our tourism economy, and the climate that we all share. I happen to be a wedding planner. I work with dozens of other vendors who are photographers, who are musicians, who are um, officiants, who rely on 99% um, of our clients coming in from out of state to get married in Maine because it is such a beautiful place. Um, tourism is our economy. What would happen if they brought this radical, dangerous, new industrial use into South Portland? This is not the same pipeline use that they're doing now. This is a new use. These are new chemicals, and we have something like 25% of our public school students, including my son, within 1,300 feet of the tank farm where that pumping station would be. So, so this is the community that's here right now who's still working on this and will continue to work on this as long as it takes. Just a couple, just a couple of words, and uh, we, won't have, we won't really have any others uh, speaking from my organization tonight. Uh, Portland Pipeline is disappointed in the council's rushed path to judgment concerning the moratorium. Uh, we've highlighted our deep concerns over the lack of an objective-based discussion regarding the issues surrounding the moratorium, the lack of uh, community involvement in the drafting of the moratorium, and the legal implications of its, of its passage. At a time when families are struggling in this difficult economy, the moratorium sends a chilling anti-business message to us and the broader business community regionally. I love Christmas in South Portland. Uh, if you walk through Mill Creek Park, uh, you see the Rotary Club selling Christmas trees, and you see the lights that are in all the trees. It, it looks beautiful, and uh, it's really nice being in this city uh, this time of year. Um, down in Washington, D.C., they're not really getting into the holiday mood. Uh, they've been sending us kind of threatening letters. They sent a letter earlier this month, and they've actually been doing that for a, a few months. They sent one back in August. Um, they're coming from the American Petroleum Institute, and they're actually coming from a, a man named um, Harry Ng. Uh, he's the VP of the American Petroleum Institute. And I just think it's kind of funny because he has literally been harrying our city for about four months now. Threatening is a pretty desperate ploy of a bullying entities. Um, so thank you for making an effort to deal with this and not be intimidated by interests who care nothing for this city. Imperial Oil, by the way, is the majority owner of Portland Pipeline, which is in turn majority owned by ExxonMobil. If Portland Pipeline authentically has no plans over the next 180 days, they have no reason to fight this because it does nothing to their current business infrastructure. And they are spending an enormous amount of money on lawyers. We have representatives from the Harper Canadian government coming down. We have people from D.C. coming up that does not say to me they have no plans. That you stay strong in the face of the pressure from the oil industry. That's the national industry here and also international when you think of Enbridge as well. Because of all I know about tar sands now, um, it seems unconscionable to me that they got the permits and that they would suggest bringing tar sands here as a business in the first place. We have come a long way. The city has been listening to our what the people have been saying. We went through the planning board procedure. Everybody in the planning board recommended that we pass the moratorium. We just had a workshop talking about the structure of the, the small committee that we need to do to draft a new ordinance. As we all concede in the city that the city wants a new ordinance that would better serve the public. I want to thank the planning board for recommending to the city council that a moratorium on the issue of tar sands should take place. And I was very pleased to hear that there was a general consensus uh, at the workshop uh, among all the councillors that they do not want tar sands coming to South Portland. Last week's workshop, another, uh, I would think, a record-breaking uh, public attended, attended workshop for the holiday season. Um, people came out in huge numbers. 
Um, you all came out against Tarsians at that time. Um, you agreed to form a committee. Uh, you agreed there would be no oil representatives on the committee. And the only reward is the financial interest of ExxonMobil, the corporate owner of Portland Pipeline Corporation. And in light of this, I want to thank the council for standing up to the American Petroleum Institute's bullying and standing up for your right to protect your community. And I urge all of you to pass the proposed Tarsians moratorium tonight. It will be a significant step in the right direction towards keeping tar sands out of South Portland. However, even if the moratorium passes tonight, and I hope and am optimistic <coughs> that it will, the job is not over, as you all well know. And now the task at hand will be turning a temporary ban on shipping tar sands into permanent legal protections. Having the small committee of three people drafting an ordinance in this time that we have through the moratorium process having a lot of public oversight and transparency so everyone can see what the process is so that when something comes out of it, it makes sense to the people in the city and they feel comfortable with the protections that it will offer them. I also am interested in public oversight and transparency. I'd like to be able to know what's going on uh, throughout the process. I think it's very important. And uh, also I think that it will be uh, inappropriate for Portland uh, Pipeline to be part of this uh, three-person committee. Adversaries will be not just trying to attack the result of that, but also the process by which it was created. And so you have to be continue to be very careful with the wording and the language. And the charge to them needs to be a really clear mandate to develop an ordinance to stop reversal of the flow of this of their pipeline. What we're concerned about are these ones here, the dilbits over here. When they hit water, all the volatile components that are added will go up, and the tarry stuff will go down. And so this is why it's very important for you to understand that tar sands, for the purposes of this uh, moratorium and for the ensuing measures, has to be about Portland Pipeline and its flow reversal. I see this moratorium as a timeout, as an opportunity to take a step back, to craft a plan that people can see the process, that it is a transparent process, it's thoughtful, and that we will then move on as a more consolidated community. I've lived here since I was three years old, and certainly this has been a huge knife that has divided our community, and I feel like we have a great opportunity here. I have never seen an issue be so divisive to any town as this tar sands issue has been to our town. It has been really, it has caused a lot of rancor. I've seen it in hardware stores and supermarkets. People really at each other's throats about this issue. We need to heal. I urge you, when you make this committee, make sure they are qualified land use regulators and lawyers who have not got current or past relationships with the oil industry. But we do have this threat breathing down our backs, and we do need this moratorium so that we can have our zoning process go ahead in peace. We were very encouraged to hear at last week's special workshop that the council unanimously opposes bringing Tarsons into South Portland and that there is a near consensus that writing a new ordinance to stop this is the goal of the moratorium process. With that goal in mind, it makes good sense to form a committee to achieve this. And that means a small, focused committee we are advocating for a three-person committee of unbiased land use attorneys or planners who have the experience and expertise to draft a new ordinance that can put permanent legal protections into place against tar sands and construction of pipeline reversal. It would be wholly inappropriate for the Portland Pipeline Corporation or attorneys from their corporate owners ExxonMobil or lobbyists from the American Petroleum Institute or oil industry to be sitting at the table regulating themselves. There should be a chance for businesses to provide input, especially to ensure that a new ordinance adequately protects existing waterfront businesses. And businesses can weigh in through public participation just like the rest of the public. We do hope and expect that there will be a clear, transparent process for public input and oversight. Thank you again for listening to the public and for using the time this moratorium will grant you to write a new airtight ordinance to provide permanent legal protections from tar sands. 
We look forward to working with all of the residents who want to stop tar sands, including those who voted no on the WPO. And we look forward to the next chapter of this democratic process. You gave a mission to the committee to, to stop tar sands from coming to South Portland. I lived on Brisbane Street in Harrisburg in March of 1979 when Three Mile Island happened. So here I am again in a, an area, in a situation where pivotal decisions and critical decisions to the very lives of the people in the community lie in the hands of the local city council. Uh, nature cannot negotiate. We are the guardians at the gate who we'll keep our seaport a seaport. South Portland is in the enviable position of helping the people and environment of Alberta and everyone along Tar Sands proposed route, including fellow Mainers whose water and air are at risk of contamination by tar sands and their byproducts. I implore you to show the entire country, because it is watching, we may be one small part of something larger. They're paying attention to what we're doing here. Um, I don't think anybody in the room look forward to this um, decision to be placed upon us. We're all about our lives. and. Uh, the only thing in some ways that we have the opportunity to do that other people along this pipeline have no voice in what will happen. We actually do have some, some ability to affect our future. Other people will have to live with what we decide. And I think in some ways maybe that's a gift and, 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 a, and a chance for us to do something good for not only ourselves but for those other people. But for me, this action that we're taking tonight is, is a first notable uh, conscious intent to take that issue on. So whatever process is decided upon, I really hope this community continues to talk about that disastrous thing that we're all facing. Thanks. And not many of us have a chance to really help change the course of history in a meaningful way as single individuals. But all of you do have that power and that opportunity tonight. and no matter what the opposition throws at you, you still have that power. And I want you to, to use that power again for the common good, for the good of us all. And I think you can tell that this community is behind you and is applauding your step and will be applauding your decisions all along the way for as long as it takes. Three times, and public discussion is closed. <laughs> Councilor Kohler? Yes. Councilor Blake? Yes. Councilor Beecher? Yes. Mayor Jalbert? Yes. Councilor Park? No. Councilor Smith? Yes. Councilor Linscott? And yes. <laughs> yeah. We have a six to one vote. The requirement for a second reading is a minimum of five affirmative votes. The motion passes. Woo!